but let's also use this moment to raise awareness of concussion and the potential problems. Okay, how do you st- how do you change standards of a team? You've heard people talk about culture in rugby league. It's one of the most commonly used words. The culture's right, the culture's wrong. We're improving the culture. What does culture mean? I'm going to use a rep team as an example that I've coached. Because in a rep team, when you get a rep team together, uh, creating culture is really urgent. And you've got to do it quickly and be really refined about what you do and really target things quickly. There's no time for messing about. This year is actually the the tenth anniversary of of when I took on a job of an Ipswich in Queensland rep side, and I'll go into a bit more detail about that because I've written about this in the past for the website Rugby League Hub, and I'm going to basically tell the story here now. If you're a leader of any kind, you certainly need to know where you're headed, don't you? <laughs> Because how can you lead anybody to somewhere you haven't identified? And then you've got to get that vision to your team off the field so that they can help you get it across to those on it. If you go into a coaching job and they're underperforming or failing, you need to focus on changing mindsets from the off. But if you're going into a job where they're winning, so sometimes rep jobs get passed down to somebody else because they've moved up an organisation despite winning a grand final. Oh, sorry, because of winning a grand final. And despite that, there's a new coach for that rep team underneath. So if you're coaching a side that's winning or operating on par or getting better or winning, setting your standards are still super important because they're your standards. A very common way of doing this in any coaching book or management book you read is, you know, some sometimes you can write a letter to your players or to your staff and say, this is what we expect. Or you can do some kind of presentation to them and say, this is where we're going, this is where we're headed. I've done both quite often. Never done one where it's just writing. I've always face-to-faced the players, and even if it's been a remote thing, I've done it on a video. And my personal philosophy is to try and do both, give them something to read at home, but also present to them. Because I don't want any of my players to be in any doubt about my standards, where I want us to get to, what their ambitions should be and what my ambitions should be. I want doubters to lift from the off. I just want their shoulders shoulders up and thinking, yes, I can... I can do something under this guy and in this regime. And I want people to start believing that what they thought was impossible is possible. And those who are doing the right things to everyone around them, then I want them to get even better and reach an even higher level. And like I said, it's it's 10 years since I took on an open age representative team, 2014, and, and they were a seriously underperforming bunch. The Ipswich Diggers is a representative side of the area of, of Ipswich in Queensland and they run teams all the way up from juniors from, I think, under 12s with a senior team being the men's team. And I was made head coach of the seniors in 2014 and stayed in the job for three campaigns. The team gets selected, or did back then, of local Ipswich A-grade players, but then also the Ipswich Jets reserve grade side, which they had then. So to put it in some kind of context, the Ipswich Jets reserve grade now plays in the Ipswich A grade competition. So all players that are selected were paid by either their club or or their or the Ipswich Jets, which is also a club, sorry. So you'd say overall they were about championship or championship one standard in the UK, if if you're listening in the UK. On the 21st of May 2013, so basically a year before I took the job, the Queensland Times newspaper ran the following headline in its sports pages. Quote, Bonner, Bomber says diggers lack pride and passion, unquote. The story underneath was a headline of a player from, from an Ipswich Rugby League club who had just re- represented the Ipswich diggers. And quotes 
were in there, such as It Is Not a Memory I Will Savor, uh, a campaign he'd rather forget, and there was talk of a return to the bad old days of several years of poor results after giving the comp a shake in the last two years. These are the things that were said. So they hardly painted a picture that was positive of the diggers' experience when I took it on, and that was just from the pen of the journalist. The player also said, quote, being a rep side, you'd think you'd enjoy it, but I don't think there was as much pride in the jersey as there should be. When we, when we went out there, it felt more like how good they looked rather than how well they represented Ipswich. When you're representing Ipswich, it should be about the team, but it seemed more about individuals and about getting the free gear. People weren't putting in. There were also shots fired at the selection committee, said the QT. It seemed like they were trying to pick a name-based team rather than one based on form. So this is what I was inheriting. The IRL operations manager of the day was given a right to reply in that same pub publication and said that the diggers preparation will be reviewed by the Ipswich Rugby League, but also added, quote, they've had the same preparation time previously and it has worked. In regards to the pride in the jersey, these things come out when you get well beaten. So I was appointed the following January for, for a May tournament. What happened over the next three years, the diggers came the closest they ever had in history in the first year. We beat the Gold Coast in game one and then managed to draw against Brisbane in game three of the tournament. But we actually lost it on points differential. And the same newspaper... Uh, said things like cruel finished for focused diggers in their headline after that tournament. And the captain spoke of the pride and passion of the players' efforts and of a phenomenal performance. So there's quite a lot in a year there. And um, I was coach of that team. And obviously it just shows you with a bit of a different approach, you can, you can achieve some great things. Fast forward two years and the chairman's challenge trophy finally ended in Ipswich hands. And the chairman of the Ipswich Rugby League, Jack Ray, told the QT in May 2016, we've had nine years and the closest we came was a draw two years ago, referencing what I've just told you about. And he talked about the pride in the jersey after two huge wins over the Gold Coast and Brisbane opponents. And basically, after the three campaigns that I had in charge of those diggers, Ipswich was arguably the dominant side in the competition. So here's a bit more of the story of how it happened. And hopefully there's some nuggets in here for you. I will just say before I go on that I actually got sacked after winning it by the new operations manager. He used the excuse that I coached a club in Brisbane, even though at the same time, Wayne Bennett was coaching England despite coaching a team in Australia. So me and that person had history anyway, so he just didn't like me and I don't particularly like him. And... If you ever want to know how politics infiltrates things, well, that's exactly what happened. So 